Hey guys, Cam back here in the Battler workshop and welcome. Well, it's been a little while since I've had my face on a video. We've been working on that little Ransom Sims and Jeffries boiler um, over the last uh, number of weeks. Um, and I will get some photos of that before my brother does send it up to the customer in Sydney. Um, as per the description, a couple of things I want to touch on. And one is uh, YouTube advertising. Now, like a lot of YouTubers, I don't monetize my channel. Um, I hate seeing ads on, on, on videos. It tends to break the video up a little bit and uh, gets a little bit annoying. Um, but I recognize that some people choose to put advertisements on their, on their uh, videos and monetize, and, and a lot of people are in there living that way. Um, unfortunately, YouTube's new policies have taken that choice away from us, smaller channels that don't monetize. And uh, I have noticed lately that a lot of advertisements have been turning up on my channel. So look, I apologize for that. But uh, as I said, that's something that's been taken out of my hands. And I guess it comes down to one thing, like a lot of corporations, banks, governments, uh, it comes down to greed, just to get that last drop of blood out of the stone. And uh, as I said, unfortunately, that decision has been taken away from uh, those of us that, uh, that decline to monetize and allow advertising on our channel. So way of the world these, people, uh, these days, I think. And uh, unfortunately, uh, if we want to keep doing videos, we just have to live by these, uh, by these new rules, uh, like it all or not. All right, guys, the other thing I want to touch on is this uh, ornamental lump of cast iron that I have in the middle of my workshop, the, uh, the Victor Lay that I purchased. Um, I've stripped it down, I've given it a full clean out, I've changed out seals, I've made some little modifications uh, along the way, and basically it's, it's all set to go. The one problem I've had is that uh, I can't actually make it turn. And the reason for that is, is that the motor that's on this big delay, that's a 5.5 kilowatt two-speed motor, it's an eight pole, four pole motor. And uh, I'm unable to get the taps out to run that at 220 volt, three phase, which is what I run all my machines at through an inverter. So the only choice I had was to go and purchase a, another motor, which means configuring, reconfiguring the base to, to fit that motor, um, and uh, convert that to a delta configuration to run a 220 volt three phase with an inverter. And that package was gonna cost me around about $1,300. So that's a motor inverter package for about $1,300, which I was saving up for um, to try and make that happen. In the meantime, I've had one of my subscribers, uh, Ian Owen over in New Zealand, actually recommend or suggested I have a look at the, uh, these new inverters that are on the market, which go from 240 volt single phase directly to 480 volt, 450 volt, three phase. Now, to me, that's a real game changer because I do have some more equipment in, uh, in storage that uh, are straight 415 volt, three phase motors. Um, you can't convert them. So to be able to run them through a, an inverter directly to, um, to 415 volt three phase is, uh, is, is an absolute winner. So I've gone ahead and purchased one of these through um, AliExpress. It's a company called Enflix that, that, uh, that manufacture them. And I had been in touch with um, the Enflix and technician people asking an awful lot of questions. And that's been a very laborious process. Um, they tend to come back with uh, one line as you'll ask a question and it comes back, no, they don't say, no, but you can do this or yes, but be aware of this. So I've selected the particular unit that suits my needs and I'll put a link to that down in the description for you guys to have a look at. But uh, I've only just finished programming it and like all inverters, the programming language and methodology for programming always seems to be different. It doesn't seem to be an, uh, a standard that they stick to, which is very frustrating, but uh, I'm very comfortable with programming it now. As I said, I've spent a fair bit of time doing that. Um, I set it up with a, uh, a suicide cable just on my desk to, uh, to play with it and learn it and get comfortable with it before I actually mount it on my machine and, uh, and wired it in. So uh, let's go and have a look at it and uh, let's see how it works, eh? All right, guys, let's start at the beginning and let's have a look at the motor that's uh, that's in here. This is the uh, two-speed four-pole, eight-pole motor. So I've um, got the configuration set up for the 440 RPM, the four-pole configuration. And as you can see, it's quite a big motor. And to purchase another motor, which, which is just a straight single-speed motor, um, isn't cheap. And I'd also have to modify the base plate slightly to be able to fit that, uh, that new motor into place. So being able to keep this in play, uh, has saved me an awful lot of money and made life a lot easier. All right, so here's the uh, inverter itself. 
uh, converting 240 volt single phase directly up to 415 volt three phase. And as I said, for those of us that have a, a small workshop, that's a, that's a real game changer. The only other option that we would have had in the past would have been to purchase a, um, a rotary converter and have that sitting somewhere that takes up floor space on its own. It also sits there humming away, costing money to run it and uh, also generating, um, generating heat. And uh, I think I've said this in the past that probably 80% of the time we spend on a machine is, is reading drawings, doing setups, doing a lot of other peripheral type things. Um, rather than machine, we probably spend maybe 20% of our time actually machining. So this thing is only drawing current and costing whilst the machine is turning. Cost on this, um, delivered to Australia was around about $420 Australian. So I see that as an absolute bargain. Uh, my good mate Peter, um, he's purchased one for one of his smaller motors. It's probably around about 100 mil square, about four inches square. And that costs somewhere in the order delivered to Australia um, around about $100, I think it was, just shy or just over, um, just shy of $100 or just over $100. But have a, uh, a converter that can uh, operate uh, single phase to 450 volt three phase for around $100. Uh, that's an absolute. So in the shed, I ran um, six mil cable from my household um, breaker box into my, my shed here. And uh, I've just got a, a 32 amp breaker that's, uh, that's been wired in and uh, that's running my cable up through my shed and down into the lathe. So um, I put an isolator in here and that kills the power to both the inverter and also the control box of the lathe. I've also got a uh, potentiometer pot that I've put on here. So it's an analog unit that uh, I've programmed into the inverter so that I can do um, speed control. And the idea is that uh, everything that's on the panel here is operational. All the on-off levers, emergency stops are all run by the handles. I don't have to touch the inverter to stop, start or do anything. And we've done some reconfiguring inside the control box to be able to um, get those signals um, in through the inverter into those relays to actually uh, make that happen. So we'll have a quick look at that. All right, so uh, this is our control cabling going into our forward and reverse relays for the motor um, coming in from the inverter. Um, I've got my six mil cable coming in from the isolation switch up into a, uh, a 16 amp breaker uh, where I've reduced down to 1.5 mil cable to be able to uh, power up the transformer. So we've reconfigured the transformer to, uh, to operate at 240 volt. And obviously we put a breaker in, in place there to protect that smaller cable uh, if there's a surge that does come through on that six mil stuff. So that's all fairly straightforward. And uh, I must thank my good mate, Peter, that I've worked with for, for many, many years. Peter's a, an electrical engineer and a very, very good electrical engineer at that, particularly when it comes to drive systems. So uh, he's given me a, a mud map, as per here, for me to, uh, to wire off. And uh, the other great thing about Peter is that uh, not only is he uh, a qualified uh, electrical engineer, he also has his uh, contractor's license. So he's actually an a great electrician as well. So. Fantastic to have Peter sitting uh, there to be able to tap the shoulder and say, look, I'm having trouble with this, Peter, what do you think? So uh, Pete's been fantastic and helped me get this thing uh, this thing up and going. All right, let's uh, let's stop the waffle. Let's uh, actually turn the thing over and, and we'll see how it operates, eh? All right, so I must admit, everything on this runs so smoothly. I'm really, really happy with, uh, with how everything runs on this. Um, absolutely no backlash in this saddle now, or very, very little backlash. Right, so forward is down. I should be able to turn the power onto the box first. Take two. Now I've got this coaster stop at the moment, so uh, you can put a deceleration phase on this. Um, I do have an acceleration phase just to stop the massive inrush of current. So I think I've got a three second ramp up on this. So we look forward. And we have a reverse. So we stop. 
Loose it. There we go, the tensionometer. is under vector control, so I've got full torque right down to uh, about two weeks. So I've had to do a fair bit of work on the brake on this, but uh, we've got that band brake working really, really well. Uh, in conjunction with the, um, the little isolator switch that operates with that. The big problem with running a deceleration phase on this is that um, when you do operate that, uh, that um, foot pedal, um, you're fighting against the drive ramping down. So uh, it keeps driving itself down, so it's the reason for coasting uh, to stop. I can use that, uh, that foot brake and uh, in a minute. Speeds and feeds run really nicely on this, uh, very, very smooth. I've run it through all its speed ranges, uh, zero to maximum speed, and uh, everything is really, really nice. You might notice in the background there there is a bit of noise, fan noise coming from that inverter, but um, I might be able to muffle that down a little bit, but we'll have a think about that. Um, you might also notice too that the inverter does tend to stick out the back a little bit, but bear in mind that there will be a big splash guard going on here that's going to offer it some protection as well. All in all, I'm very, very happy that I've actually got this thing turning. So um, a little bit more cleaning up, a little bit more tidying up to do, a couple of little things to do. Splash guard goes on and uh, we should be able to start uh, making some chips fairly soon. Well, there we go, guys. So, uh, as I said, I'm very, very happy with uh, with how that inverter's performing. I guess the the truth test is when we start uh, making some chips and uh, and using the thing in anger. But uh, uh, based on the test I've done so far, I'm not expecting any real surprises. So, as I said, this technology um, can be a real game changer for those of us with small workshops that don't have full 15 volt and uh, don't want to um, fork out the cost for a uh, for a rotary converter to to run our machinery. One of the other jobs I need to do on this lathe is, uh, as I mentioned previously, some of the change gears are missing. So uh, I have um, got the gear cutters, and I got them very, very cheap through uh, from AliExpress or Amazon, one of the two. But uh, for a full set, uh, it cost me around about uh, $85 Australian, uh, compared to the highest cost that I saw, which was uh, around 350 So to cut um, one-offs, uh, I think it's going to be ideal. So that's probably going to be the next video I'll be putting up is uh, is uh, making up those change gears. And we'll be using the uh, uh, electronic indexing mechanism to do that. So we'll have a bit of a look at that one uh, at the same time. All right, guys, uh, that's it for now, I think. As I said, I've got a little bit more tidying up to do on the lathe to, to get things together. But uh, I think we're about 90% there now. All right, we'll catch you soon.